Hey there, this is Joel Rich with another Maximus P tutorial. This video is a continuation of a basic groove object tutorial that I did earlier. This one's a little bit more advanced, so if you kind of know what you're doing, then this might be fine. But if you have no idea what's going on, then you should probably watch the basic tutorial because it might make more sense to you. All right, so we left off at about this point. Um, so we got the loop one going to the groove. We got the buffer, the muff stuffer buffer. Um, we got the record object so we can put we can stuff the muff stuffer and all right so i can i can whoa turn that off there we go so i can i can record into this record into there let's see i'm going to record something now i'm recording i'm recording there we go it's recorded Cool. So this will now be making sounds. Okay. So one of the problems with the groove object is that click. You can hear a little bit of a click when it's like when it's repeating over and over again like that. And that's actually kind of annoying. Uh, the reason it's doing that click is it's playing it's playing a bit of the sound and then it's starting again and it's playing another bit of the sound and it's starting again. And when it does that, it disconnects the waveform and it makes that click. The waveform actually like breaks apart. And that's when you hear that click, is that instantaneous change of uh, value. Um, so how do we deal with that? Well, the groove object has this output, the groove signal or the loop sync output. And that goes from zero to one as it's playing the waveform. So as the start, zero, end, one, and then it goes back to zero. And so it looks sort of like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it look like this. And I'm going to use this to control the amplitude of the signal that Groove is sending out. And what that will do is that the, the break point is always, is always here. This is the break point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mend that breakpoint and I'm going to push that shit together. Instead of it breaking apart, it's going to just squeeze down and be stuck together right there and you won't you won't hear the click anymore. And that'll be nice. Uh, okay, so how am I going to do that? That's, uh, that's a good question. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to interrupt that. And I'm going to make a multiply object. So now the volume, now that the signal will be multiplied by a, sort of a control signal, an envelope signal. And all right. And now the question is how to make a useful envelope. Uh, here's a quick and dirty method of doing it. I know there's a lot of better methods, but uh, I like doing things quick and dirty. Hmm. I'm going to make a Pong object. What the Pong object does is it sort of bounces sound, it kind of reflects sound back. If you don't know how to, like, this is the most interesting, this is like the, the most useful tip ever, is you just hit Alt and click on an object and it opens the help. And, you know, open Pong reference. I want to know how the Pong object works. This will tell you how the Pong object works. This is basically how I learned Maximus P, was just opening the help files and everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you how what's, what, what's going on here by making a scope object. And this will kind of, this will allow you to kind of see things a bit better. So you can see, yeah, there you go. There's that uh, sawtooth going from zero to one, uh, middle line zero. Um, right. And so I'm going to make the Pong object go mode zero, which will, which is the reflect mode. I want the low point to be zero with the top point to be one. All right. So it should look exactly the same. It looks exactly the same. How do we make it useful? Well, if we make it go to, oops, no, not message, not message. If we make it go to two instead of one, if we multiply it by two, if we go zero to 
Now it'll go to 0 to 2. And what Pong is going to do is going to reflect it back. Maybe slow it down a little bit so you can see better. There you go. There's that triangle. It's re it's going it's trying to go up to two, but instead is reflecting back and turning into a nice triangle wave. All right. So if we plug this into here, let's speed this up maybe a little bit. Two point five. <laughs> The problem with this now is that you can kind of hear the sound ramping up and down. You don't get the click anymore, but there's there's too much ramping up and down of the sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it more of a trapezoid shape. Um, so that it's going to go down for the click, and then it's going to stay up. And down for the next click, stay up. And so it will be more of a constant, constant volume. And, 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 uh, how do I do that now? Good question. So I'm going to take that triangle and I'm going to make it huge. I'm going to multiply it by, say, 20. Huge freaking triangle. And then I'm going to use the clip object, which will just uh, clip off that top of the triangle. Bottom value zero. Top value, I think. Top value, let's say 0.95. Because it'll make it easier to see what's actually going on. Oops, what did I do wrong? I did missed an L. There we go. Put that into there. And now, that. There we go. So now you can see that it is a trapezoid. It goes down from for a second, and then it stays up. Cool. A lot less click. There's still a little bit, but getting rid of it completely is kind of impossible. But, but I think it's pretty acceptable. I think it's acceptable. All right, and that's all that matters because I'm doing this tutorial. Cube. Okay, so this is going long. I'm going to show you how to do this behind me in part three. Is it over there or is it over here? I don't know. But uh, part three is coming up next. If this is, if you like this tutorial, then hit like or subscribe or favorite it something. Yeah, because uh, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Okay, part three coming up.